This time in our Engine Week series, we show you the details of the engine powering John Humbard's Super 701. All right, so today we're talking UL power engines. Of course, unfortunately, I can't go all the way out to Belgium. So the next best thing, I'm here in Sandersville, Georgia at KLN Aviation Services. I'm going to talk to Ray, everything UL power today. Uh, I operate, own and operate Kaolin Aviation Services here in Sandersville, Georgia. Uh, been in business here for 20 years. Uh, been with UL Power for uh, about five years. And this, I'm standing here now with our, this is our new turbocharged engine. This will be the uh, ninth horsepower range uh, engine that we have in our model line. Uh, so we go here from 97 horsepower all the way up to this engine, which will be uh, 220 horsepower with the turbocharger. Awesome. Well, explain to me uh, the different model numbers and then what those horsepower ratings are per model number. Okay. The we start off with the the smallest engines are the 260 series, and that's that's a 2.6 liter, and then the 3.5 the 350 series is a 3.5 liter, and it's and the 390 is 3.9, etc. 520. Is 5.2. This is the actual. This is a 5.2 liter. This is the 520 uh, engine with the turbocharger added. The RPM range has been lowered to 2,700 RPMs, and this engine in is in the final stages of development right now. But it's going to end up at 210 to 220 horsepower. Uh, we're about to start uh, flight testing on. This is a display engine, but we're about to start flight testing on the uh, pre-production engine in the next few weeks. Awesome, so this might be available sometime at the end of the year, or early yes, next year. Yes, we should be able to take orders on this turbo engine uh, by the end of the year. Okay, well going back to again the, the, the small horsepower, what is the, the model number and the horsepower the two, working your way up? Yeah, the 260i is 97 horsepower, then the IS is the higher compression version is 107. Okay. And then you go up to the 350i, this 118, the 350 IS is 130. The, and those are four cylinders. Those are four cylinder engines. Okay. And then from the 350, we go up to the 390, which is the small six cylinder. And that's uh, 140 horsepower or 160 horsepower. And then the 520 is either the 520i is 118, uh, excuse me, 180. And the 520 IS is 200. Uh, and then this uh, IS turbo will be. Uh, like I said, 210 to 220. Uh, we have different sub-models. There are <clears throat> engines with the RPM range optimized for helicopters. Uh, and we have aerobatic engines. Uh, we have an inverted uh, oil system, an aerobatic version that's available that's all self-contained within the engine, so you have no, no need for external systems like the Christian uh, inverted oil system, because it's all already built into the engine. Okay. So the different uh, for the different model numbers and it jumps horsepower. That's a, a lower compression to a high compression. Yes, the the I is a eight eight to one compression and the IS is eight point seven to one. Okay, so does that mean on the low compression you can run like MoGas? Are the other ones you need to run hundred low the, lead? <clears throat> excuse me. The fuel on it, MoGas is is uh, recommended for the engines for all the engines. It's the, the preferred fuel. Uh, the I models use ninety one octane. And the IS models need 93 octane. The Declan is recommended if you're run, if you're going to run 100 low lead. Uh, I use uh, about 50 50 uh, between 93 octane and 100 low lead in my engine. And at 250 hours, the valves and everything look perfect. So yeah, right. If you could kind of walk around and explain to us the advantages of, of this modern engine with, with some of the legacy stuff of being air cooled. Okay. All right. This is a direct drive air cooled engine so it's a uh, traditional aircraft engine design but you have two dual electronic ignitions electronic fuel injection hey everyone let me take just a moment here to thank our sponsors that make all this possible great companies like airworks airtech coatings clemens insurance agency acme aero stole creek aviation in-flight cam 
Whelan Aerospace Technologies. So take a moment after this video to say hello to all of them and remember to check out the affiliate links in the description below. And remember, just build it. Let's get back to it. These lines on the side of the cylinder heads are pressurized oil that's just pushed directly in on the valves for head cooling. And we also have sprayers on the connecting rod that spray oil on the inside of the cylinder uh, walls. And all that promotes cooling. So these, these cylinders typically run in flight. Uh, cylinder head temperatures are 250 to 275 degrees. So they're very cool. <coughs> it's a very modular engine. Uh, the oil sump, the, this is the oil pump right here on the front, the thrust bearing housing, the intake manifold, the starter, uh, oil filters right here on the front. It's a very modular engine. It's very easy to work on. It's the simplest engine probably in the world to, to maintain. Uh, the heads are separate from the barrels. Uh, these, there's six screws that hold the head on, so you can remove the head to do a, a valve job. So everything, this intake manifold, if you wanted the air intake to be on the front, you just lift it off, turn it 180 degrees, and set it back down. Uh, the exhaust system works the same way. You can put these, these exhaust pipes on that side and turn them to the back, you know, to the front of the engine instead of the back. Uh, there's a 50 amp alternator built into the, uh, into the right here. Uh, this is a permanent magnet, uh, actually a three phase generator. So it's, there's no moving parts, it's very dependable. Uh, connecting the engine to the ECU is done with this cable. It's all, it's all pre-wired. You just run the cable inside the airplane. You know, going, going back to the, the alternator okay. generator, uh -huh. when does that actually start producing power? Cause I've seen some people do this in the experimental using a, a regular alternator. It doesn't quite create power until 1300, 1500 RPM. This, this is going to start producing power at, at somewhere around 1000 RPMs. Usually a little bit less, usually about eight to 900, but uh, certainly by 1000 you'll be, it'll be producing Which is, power. I assume, about what you're idling at on these. Uh, typical idle speeds on this is, is usually about 800. So you're, you're, you're right at the, the level where it's going to start putting out power okay. at idle. Okay. So it's nearly, <laughs> nearly a single point connection here for your yes. electrical. And there's one other connector that I don't have in my hand, but it's, it's a very similar connector to this. It's slightly smaller with the wires coming off to interface to the airframe. And they're all color coded with, this is black heat shrink, but they're all color coded with different colors heat shrink. So all the red ones uh, go to power, all the blue goes to ground and, and so forth. So it's very, very easy to work on, <clears throat> very easy to install. Now, if you, if you order an engine, what do you get with just the engine? And then, and then do they have firewall kit um, specific to airframes, or is that only from the aircraft manufacturer? Uh, no, the, the engines will come, when you open up the box, the engine will have uh, the cooling baffles in the box. They'll be you know, extra high so you can trim them down to whatever height you need. So it'll come with the cooling baffles, it's going to come with the exhaust system, it comes with an air oil separator, it comes with the engine isolation mounts, it comes with dual fuel pumps and fuel filters and the mounting brackets for those pumps and filters. So all that comes with the engine in the box. So, so they kind of already include that as a firewall forward with the engine? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. What you need, uh, Accessory wise firewall forward is you're going to need an oil cooler of the proper size and you're going to need uh, Your firewall forward fuel and oil lines. There'll be two oil hoses and Typically three fuel lines and those are those vary with the with the installation and the aircraft type so we can't include those uh, As such okay. What is uh, obviously you mentioned several different models that they have what is kind of like a, the entry-level price point uh, with that was it 80? The 97, 97 horsepower is the is our smallest engine. That's the 260i, and the price right now the price changes with the with the exchange rate with the euro. We try to you know follow that. Uh, so the the 260i is uh, right now is about twenty to twenty thousand dollars, maybe slightly less. Okay, and it goes up from there to. And it goes this engine, this turbo engine right now. I believe they haven't given us a hard number on it yet, but I believe forty four thousand. Okay. is where it's going to end up. All right. And what is uh, what is roughly the lead time if you were to order an engine today to get one actually in, in here so they could get shipped to the customer? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, usually we tell customers uh, six weeks. Most of the time we can get it here sooner, but we're at kind of at the hands of shippers and, and customs uh, a little bit. Uh, we don't have engines in stock because there are options uh, like the length of this harness. For some installations, this might need to be longer. Uh, so for that reason, uh, since there are a few options that we do, there's we don't order engines and have them sitting here in stock. Yeah, one of the, the main, one of the big questions that everybody has for engines, of course, is weight. And then how do people actually measure that? Is it with accessories? Is it without accessories? Is it with exhaust or without exhaust? Do you know how much these weigh and like how they go about weighing them for uh, pu published the, weights? The weight of the engine is with oil. It does not, the weight does not include the fuel pumps and the filters. That's it. Everything else is, is it, and the oil cooler. So anything bolted onto it anything for flight? Anything bolted onto the engine as it's shipped with oil ready to run is the way the weight is. Uh, so that starts at uh, uh, 165 pounds for the 260 and 173 for the 350 series and it's 242, I believe, for the 520s. And I actually weighed my 520 when I took it out of the box, and it was exactly 242 pounds. I put everything on top and weighed it. All right, this box here is the engine control unit. Uh, this is what uh, you see. You got a small connector and a larger one. The larger one goes here uh, to connect everything. This ECU works. The engine is operated on a fuel map that is based on five sensors. You got the throttle position sensor, the air temperature sensor, the air pressure from the manifold, and the oil temperature, <clears throat> and also the uh, the throttle positions, which you know are fixed. We don't worry about those. Uh, but the fuel map is designed to operate on basically on the oil temperature, the air temperature, the air pressure, and the position of the throttle. So it's a very simple system. There's not 35 sensors all over the engine, you, you know, that could cause a problem. It's, uh, it's broken down to the very basic, simplest form, because the, the simpler it is, the less chance there is it's going, anything can happen to it. Uh, this unit is very, it's a very robust unit. Uh, it's a machined aluminum housing sealed with an O-ring, so it's waterproof, it's temperature resistant. Uh, it's even shielded against electromagnetic interference. So it's uh, a very robust unit, and we've never had an issue with an ECU. Hey Ray, what else do you do in this uh, big, beautiful shop you have here? <laughs> well, like I say, I've been in business since uh, for you know for 20 years here. Uh, I've actually been building. I started my first RV, the RV4 that I have now, back in uh, 1992. So I've been doing you know a lot of RV work. Uh, but we do basically whatever a customer needs. This RV14 right here, we have pretty much built it from the ground up uh, we have another rv7 right back here that is just getting an engine change uh, so we do whatever a customer needs uh, i have fit i've built wings fit canopies built fuel tanks etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, just anything the customer needs is what we we try to accommodate okay and then other than uh, the ul powers website itself finding you as a dealer where can people find you online or on social uh, I do have a Facebook uh, page on the Kaolin Aviation. I do not have a website. Remember to like and subscribe. Come back tomorrow for our next episode in our Engine Week series. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.